From Austin, Texas, they drove 14 hours. From Lincoln, Nebraska, fans poured across the Show Me State. Destination St. Louis and the first Big 12 championship. Nebraska still dreams of the first three-peat championship in college football history. A year ago, the Cornhuskers torched Florida in the Arizona desert. Two years ago, Tom Osborne's frustrations ended in Miami's Orange Bowl. Today, underdog Texas comes in riding a four-game winning streak. They hope to end Nebraska's reign. ABC Sports presents the Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship. The Big Red of Nebraska against the Longhorns of Texas. 64,000 expected under the roof in St. Louis for the first ever Big 12 championship game. Nebraska dreams of a third title in a row. They want to earn a right to play Florida State in the trigger, and they hope that Ohio State can handle Arizona State in the Rose Bowl. Good afternoon. Welcome, everybody. I'm Brent Busberger. One thing, Nebraska's going to really feel at home here, folks, because it is a sea of red as far as the fans are concerned. Most of the tickets were gobbled up by the Nebraska fans. For the Longhorns, it's a road game. Let's send you to John Saunders. All right, Brent, thanks a lot. Papa. The Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship. It's Nebraska against Texas. And here come the Longhorns. Three touchdown underdog, but a week ago they beat up on their arch rivals from Texas A&M, 51 to 15. Meanwhile, for Nebraska, it was a great defensive performance. They shut down Colorado, 17 to 12. And here come the mighty Cornhuskers. Line Brent Musburger. Sounds like we're right back in Lincoln, Coach. But you went down to Austin to chat with Coach Makovic and the Horns. What's the feeling down there? Well, Brent, I came away thinking that this team has an air of confidence about them. The coaches have done a real good job of convincing the kids if they do the good things they did against the teams like Notre Dame and Colorado, they played well but lost, and eliminate the things that got them beat, they have a chance. And you know something? The kids believe it. They've got some fine weapons. Number 11. Ricky Williams. You know, right now in his career, he's ahead of Earl Campbell's numbers. He makes a lot of yards after first contact. What's your feeling about his quarterback, James Brown? Very mobile, can run. He throws the ball downfield real well. We don't have to tell anybody about the defensive ends for Nebraska. Jared Tomich and Grant Wistrom, two of the best in the country. Well, these guys really test your offensive line fundamentals. You better be sound. The coaching matchup, John Makovic. A chess player with his offense. Tom Osborne stresses discipline and a great offensive line. Makovic and Osborne ready to test wins in the Big 12 championship. In some quarters, Nebraska was favored by three touchdowns, but Jack Arut, there was someone down in Austin who wasn't buying that this week. Absolutely, Brent. Quarterback for the Longhorns, James Brown, came out early in the week and startled the entire state of Nebraska when he said, look, we're going to win by three touchdowns. Everybody said, what does he think he is? Joe Namath from the Super Bowl predicting the win? But what was interesting is when I talked to Brown yesterday, he didn't back down from that comment. Now, John Makovic tried to play it down yesterday in the special meetings and the press conferences. But when you look at James Brown, I think, as Coach Dick Vermeil says, they've become believers that they might be able to upset Nebraska. Startled everybody in Nebraska, Jack. How about Texas in the locker room? <laughs> they, were, yeah, they weren't real excited about it initially, but you know, I had people down there tell me it actually helped the rest of the Longhorns in terms of mental concentration and, and giving them a little air confidence. Well, Nebraska won the toss and deferred. Chris Brown, the ball on the tee for the Cornhuskers. Back deep, Mike Adams, along with Sean Mitchell, the wide receiver and running back 
both with excellent speed. Correction down there on the tee. Our umpire Joe Darden he works with the kicker, and of course the referee will signal, "Let's go." He's John Laurie down in the end zone. Nebraska has done a good job all year covering kickoff. Beautiful kick. Coming out the 20-yard line. Well, we know it wasn't the wind. <laughs> So here is the great prognosticator, James Brown, and he's been good as of late. 74 passes without an interception. And a little Earl, Ricky Williams will be lining up behind him. Mike Adams, number 83. If they're going to make the big play with a wide receiver, Adams stretched out a week ago against AM. The offensive line, Dan Neal outstanding. But let's see how those tackles, Bishop and Jay Humphrey, Hold up here today against Wistrom, who's the right rush in for Nebraska down in the three point. The tackles will have to handle him. The running back helps pick him up, and they snap off a completed pass to Davis out to the 30 yard line. That's a 10 yard gain, and this defense found out right away that unlike Colorado, they're going to keep running backs in and hope to block. Jason Peter, number 55, had an outstanding sequence against the Buffaloes last Friday in Lincoln. There's Mike Minter. Yes, he'll play Rover, and he will, too, move up to that rush defensive end spot. So number 10 will again be all over the field, as he was last week. And you can see him move up hard on that right side now. Minter getting ready to come, it looks like, on Brown on first down. He does running play, and they will run it right straight ahead. Well, John McAvick told us, Fred, that he has no plan to sit and wait and make things happen. They're going to attack right away. That's his aggressive nature. He says they won't repeat many things. Learning from Tom Landry, he says, I like the change up, and I save some things for the second half. He's going to use formations to try to create advantages within his formation package. Look for him to go deep quite often. Well, right away, Wistrom makes his first tackle of the game on Williams. That makes it second and nine. Ricky with a yard. Minter now has moved between tackle and in. Bluffs coming. Brown back. Has protection. Goes. And it's, he's two for two. And that is his tight end. Ball's out of bounds. Texas ball. That's a first in. And that first down. A good tight end. Pat Fitzgerald there. He's from Gora, California. Now, they did a good job of pass protecting this time. And the plan is to help the tackles in any way they can, especially if they're holding the football. That time, they got a nice five-step drop rhythm, got it out there to Fitzgerald and rid him, and he doesn't hang on to it. Unfortunately, it didn't cost him a turnover. But Thir get rid of the ball quickly. 13-yard gain, and Jamel Williams knocking the ball free as it went out of bounds. And the Horns smartly moved to two first down. John Makovic. He's a very creative play caller. Here comes the blitz, and it's the toss package. It's Mitchell trying to get the corner, and he's run out on that far side. That is Williams again, number 28, making the play on Sean. You've got to really be on guard defensively because McAvick likes to run plays on quick counts. Get up there, either be in a two-point stance or in a three-point stance, and snap the ball now. That will force the defense to line up and show their colors right now what they plan to do. You can see teams in the Big 12 have not been very successful on this first drive. Last week, prior to Colorado, they were minus one yard rather than 51 yards. Texas keeping possession. Second and eight. Ball on the Longhorn 44-yard line. And Brown on the second screen. Now fires deeper, and it is complete. He hit number eight, Wayne McGarrity, the sophomore flanker that time, and that is going to give Texas a third first down. And what is very obvious with that play is that Brown is willing to be patient, stayed back there in the pocket. His original play broke down, but he still found the wide receiver. He has the ability to move, and you have to rush this guy with concern of his ability to move. See, now they double Tomich on the top of your screen. He mo moves to his right, out of pressure, and throws it accurately. Strong opening drive with McGarity watching from the sideline, getting a break. And on first down in Nebraska territory, here's Mitchell back in, looking for the corner, turned it upfield, and he powered his way to the 41-yard line. Mike Deal, the offensive line coach, said in running the ball against Nebraska, you have to down block, protect the inside gaps because they're a great penetrating team. So we're going to run a lot of counter plays like that and also toss the ball and get it outside quickly. Mix in with some spread formations and draws. Priest Holmes, 
checks in, and Mitchell takes another break for Coach Makovic with Osborne watching uh, with just a touch of concern on this opening drive. It is second and six, and the Horns are not backing away from this defense. And on John O'Connor's got it, 35. First down, Texas again. Eric Stokes, the free safety, forced to make a stop. And this is an offensive clinic for the moment, as far as Texas is concerned. That's what they did, is they pulled the big left tackle and kicked out and blocked down and walled off the defense on counteraction, just as they told us they were going to do. See the big hole walled off inside? Here comes Bishop, 75, gets the nice kick out block, and upfield goes Priest home. Opening drive of the inaugural Big 12 championship. 12-29, first quarter. Horns with another first down. One running back. McAvick changes formations on every play. Brown back. Gets time. Fires complete. Adams, 25. Out of bounds at the 22-yard line. Eric Stokes again making the tackle. And the Horns are moving the ball in huge chunks. Adams is a guy that you have to respect deep, so you better turn and run. He's a very good deep receiver. He's a great kick returner. See, and they backed off and played a loose zone that time, and it was a zone blitz. They brought the outside linebackers, released some defensive linemen underneath, and the corners just backed off. Yeah, you could see the freshman Brown. Texas will test him. He certainly stood the test against Colorado, breaking up seven passes, but he backed away into that zone defensive look. Now Williams comes over to a right wing, sort of offset in the eye, and they're going to run. This is Mitchell, left, and that penalty flag comes down. That was Eric Warfield and Jamel Williams pursuing him over there, and the flag was thrown. It might have been a face mask on that going out of bounds, but let's just hold on here and let uh, John Laurie tell us what the situation is. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. I think that was on Jamel Williams, the outside linebacker that played so well last week against Colorado. See, it's again a counteraction. Pull people from the backside. Now he's going to break it outside. Gets a block right there from Williams. He's outside. He steps on and there's the... Oh, I don't think... that. That's... No, you shouldn't call that. You, don't, you really... Yeah, he didn't get his fingers even cut. <laughs> Makovic will take it, and so will the Longhorns. They get the first break, and the ball will get spotted inside the 10-yard line. This is going to be a first and goal. Dallas Cowboy fans might recognize some of the formations that the Horns throw out there because John Makovic learned under Tom Landry, and on their opening drive, Nebraska has really shut the door on people. Makovic was really good inside the red zone area, but he's against the great defense down there as well. Now Williams in motion, and Brown, a good run, steps to the five, down at the four-yard line. A very big move by the Texas quarterback who was in trouble that time. Well, the one thing about it, when you have good defensive ends that get up field, like Winstrom does, like Tommy does, if they get up field and the protection breaks down, you can get up underneath them, and that's what he can do. Brown can do that, just as if it was a called quarterback draw, which they do have in the game. Might be a good time right here, Coach. Second down and goal from that five-yard line, except they might be looking for Brown after that deep run. He just showed the corners because they split the backs. And they counter back with Priest Holmes. Touchdown, Texas, like that on the opening drive. Outnumbered, but full of fire now, these Longhorn fans. You mentioned outnumbered, Brent. Good term to use technically, because what they did is they used counteraction, then pulled people over to the point of attack, and had more blockers than defenders, and he takes it in for the touchdown. Phil Dawson, excellent kicker, makes it 7-0 Texas. So the three touchdown underdogs from Austin put the first touchdown on the board and they made it look easy, didn't they? a good job of getting the defensive end Wistrom to come up field. They pull the backside tackle around to seal it off and the counteraction freezes him inside gives the running back right here. Now here he comes back inside. Nice block right there by Jay Humphrey 67 and good power running for the touchdown. First touchdown run scored against the first unit defense this year. Big moment now for Texas. 
Nebraska is an outstanding kick return team. In fact, they are fourth in the nation. What Dawson needs to do in this controlled environment is to put it in the end zone and bring him out on the 20. That would pick up seven and a half yards off the average. Let's see what happens here. Cheatham and Benning back deep for the Huskers. And this is Chris Stockton. So they've gone to this leg to see if he can put it in the end zone. Stockton hooks it toward the corner and catches it. So they go to Chris Stockton. And he does hook it into the corner of the end zone. It'll come out on the 20. And there's the offensive line in the horns, Jack Aroot. And Brent, you know there's a lot of concern by John McAvitt and his coaching staff about the youngness of that offensive line. After that touchdown drive, the first thing Coach Mack did was go to the offensive line, congratulate each and every one of them, and try to boost their ego one more time. He plays that psychological game, Dick Vermeil. All right, Jack, down Nebraska. Trailing by seven. First and ten on the 20. And here is junior quarterback Scott Frost handing off to D'Angelo Evans, the freshman, for two yards. He's hit by Dusty Renfro. Now, Scott Frost struggled in the weather conditions a week ago. And coach telling us that he did not have a turf shoe wide enough to fit. So he went out in sort of a flat bottom shoe and he slipped on some options. He's an outstanding runner. And his touchdown interception ratio. Is good too, 13 to 3, and he's rushed for nine touchdowns. Now, I know a lot of people think there's a problem here at this particular position, and he did almost toss one away on an option, but now he finds himself back by seven. He's going to be the focus here today. Second down and eight. Cross rolls right, puts it up, whips one behind the receiver, and it is incomplete. That is Kenny Cheetah, number six, who had checked in. He brought the play in from Osborne's sideline. D'Angelo Evans, number four, is a huge story here today. Amon Green did not even make the trip because of a stress fracture in his foot. So the freshman has to carry the load. Jay Sims, an untested high back, might be his backup. Brian Schuster became a daddy this week, so congratulations to his wife, who I'm sure is back home watching. He figures to be very prominent, number 28 does. On third down and eight, and on the left side, that was Adam True who pulled back, and uh, that'll cost the Huskers five yards. So this offensive Dead line. Ball. ball start. Offense, five-yard penalty, repeat third down. Chris Dishman, and I still feel he made one of the huge plays of the year that goes unlooked last week when he pounced on that fumble inside the five-yard line late against Colorado. Frost was unable to hold the ball, and if the Buffaloes had recovered there, it seemed like a touchdown for him. Third down and 14, so Frost goes straight down. Fires complete to the 25. Nebraska must punt. Not enough for the first down. John Bedrill out of Gregory, South Dakota, makes the reception. But now comes one of the better punters in the country as the Cornhusker special teams are absolutely outstanding. This will be Jesse Cush from Columbus, Nebraska. Well, Gary Darnell, the defensive coordinator of Texas, has to be very pleased with that free play series right there, Brent. Uh, not many people have done that to Nebraska in the opening series. Here's Adams, the fine wide receiver, wearing the gloves inside, looking up into what is a white ceiling here in the dome in St. Louis. Push against that rush, nails it. He is so good under pressure. 31, it's caught. Adams has a crease and caught from behind at the 37-yard line. So we'll take a break. Maybe you're surprised, but the Texas Longhorns are not. They're ahead of Nebraska. The Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship on ABC brought to you by Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Dr. Pepper is just with the doctor order. Domino's Pizza it produces their newest crust sensation, garlic crunch crust pizza. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. And Pontiac in your local Pontiac dealer, we are driving excitement. Here come the Longhorns. Into a shift. Ricky Williams offset to the left of James Brown. Brown slips, regains balance, fires middle, deep, wide open, and it's the tight end Fitzgerald to the 40-yard line. First down and 10. They throw the ball down the middle, but they use the running back, Williams, to help over here. Good game planning. They're not going to allow 75 to have to take him all the time. You see Williams moves off to the left. That gives him time to set up and go down in between that zone and get the ball to Fitzgerald. 
That's the longest gain of the day for the Horns. 23 yards. Derek Lewis, 82, replaces Fitzgerald at tight end after the 23-yard gain. Brown with the draw play now on first and 10. And Mitchell with speed trying to get the corner out of bounds at the 35. And the Horns hit that Nebraska defense for a five-yard gain. Good game planning. Winstrom, 98 there. Now he's constricting. They run underneath, so he holds his ground underneath. Now the running back skill, he bounces outside and bursts upfield for a nice game, countering the play of the defensive lineman. And Dick, uh, folks who haven't seen Sean Mitchell, should be aware he can really move. Oh, yes, he can. Here's another guy that can really move. He loves to call the plays himself. He's on top of That last series had to be great confidence for the team, but even more so for him. Second down, roll right, Brown looking to throw it back on the screen. Now he's got to run away from Williams, and he eludes him to the 40. 39, he's going, and he breaks free. James Brown, the magician, to the 30-yard line. What a move. Improviser. He does not do that very much. What they wanted to do is fake here and throw back to him. See, he tries to throw, but he'll set up and look back. They have him covered. Good defense. He's under pressure now. This guy normally likes to try to throw the ball in these situations. They've asked him today to run more. Finally, Eric Warfield brings him down. So this will be third down and inside of a yard. With McAvick, it's not an automatic run. This is the first third down play of the game for the Horns, who lead it by a touchdown. Fitzgerald back in the game in motion to the right, and you're right. Brown is back, fires, first down on the throw. And one thing John McAvick has always done, as Tom Landry did in the old days with the Cowboys, find yourself a tight end and make a living off it, because in the middle of the field, you're going to find some holes in this very aggressive defense, and John is doing just that. Well, defensive coordinator Charlie McBride said, I'm concerned about this guy you see on the screen right here, McAvick, because he does a great job in big game of breaking all the tendencies. So you have nothing to play. Now you have to line up and just play physical. The Horns leading by seven and threatening again. Brown with a hot hand, six at six for 76 yards. Going to put it up the seventh time. No, incomplete. There's his first incompletion of the game. Adams, the intended receiver, was covered by Michael Booker. You know, having experienced similar situations, Brent, as a coach, when you score against a great football team first, yes, it does give your football team confidence, but it also gives you more confidence in your game plan because you haven't prepared a game plan against Nebraska. Now, all of a sudden, you've got to put together, and it's working. Boy, I'll tell you, it's much easier to call the rest of the game plan. Dick, you and I have seen throughout this year and others, when an underdog jumps ahead, it changes the entire complexion oh, of the fun. football game. Quick count. Now Williams can't run away from it. Minner coming from the backside. See, that is one of the best ways to stop a counterplay. Not so much in front. They blitz from the backside. That's Rucker 84 and Minner number 10 teamed up. Minner up as an outside backer now, and there he makes it. Let's talk about Minter and 84. They put 84 on the field for a little added speed over there and watch him come through along with Minter. That's the negative of a counter. It takes a little while to get back to the onside. If you don't clean up the backside, they can run you down. And that's what happened. Good change up defensive call by Charlie McBride. Yeah, well, he's also changing personnel. They think fatigue could be a factor. They've gone to the second unit rush bin right now. Rucker at right end instead of Wisdom. Brown firing high. Plate to the seven yard line. That's Mike Adams, number 83, his senior flanker from Arlington, Texas. He got the one on one coverage now, right here. Number 22, Ralph Brown, Colorado, tried to get the team. Gave him a little stick. It goes inside the post. Notice no safety help right there. The ball going perfectly to the inside, like he has to throw it. He did that well on the practice field. He did. Good wide receiver, Dickie. Blocked the corner off with oh, his no, body. No made sure he couldn't get to the football. And this Showing is you why he's one of the best. And there it is. So it's first and goal again for the Horns, who are up seven. Mitchell on the draw, looking for the left corner. And that time it was well defended. Number 16, along with Grant Wistrom, was back. But Eric Stokes, the free safety, he was there along with Wistrom. Maybe going to the well a little too often for that counteraction. Now, the last two counterplays in a row have been thrown for a loss. 
Now, you watch Makovic. Knowing him like I do, he will change up with something more direct or throw the ball. Dick is tight end. is off to uh, such a good start. You wonder about Fitzgerald down here. Second and goal from the nine-yard line. Let's... Uh, Adams will be off to the slot into the left. They the tight end is over here on the left side. I should say Adams was the right side. Brown with good escapability. In zone intercepted. Uh, down, down, down. Bad throw into the middle of the defense. And the Cornhuskers pick it off in the end zone. Eric Stokes, the free safety, comes up with the INT. Not a very smart decision. Under pressure, should have thrown the ball out of the end zone, and I'm sure that's what Coach McEvick is telling him. See, he was confident. He's been hitting every ball he throws, every variety of pass. He gets back here, he feels invincible. He starts to scramble when he doesn't have to scramble. Throws it, trying to get it over the top. Too many white jerseys. Not a real good understanding what the underneath coverage was doing. And Tomich was influencing the play all the way. He had penetrated, and he created some havoc in the quarterback's mind. Frost and the Huskers trailing by seven. Run the option. Frost, a good running back, crashes out now to the 27-yard line. That was Casey Hampton. Out of Galveston making the stop. And there's big Chris Aikens, number 96. He'll create Speaking to Havoc. He'll be there. Humphrey, number 49, fine linebacker. And Bryant Westbrook, folks. You don't watch number 30. He is lining up at the left corner, so it would be the quarterback's right. He's simply one of the best in the land. He's playing a little bump and run down here. And on second down, D'Angelo looking for running room, and he's buried at the 29-yard line. Boy, is that Casey Hampton. Now, he's a true freshman, 6'1", 300. He started the last five games. This is his start. He fundamentally is the best-looking nose guard tackle I have seen as a true freshman. His high school coaches must be awfully good football coaches because you don't learn that much in that short a period of time. His technique is excellent. Third and one. Coach Osborne sends in an additional tight end on this play. Frost, an excellent runner. Evans, the lone running back. Double tight formation, and Frost gets the first down. Now, forward progress is marked for the first down on this play as he came across before he was pushed back. Well, Frank Solich, the assistant head coach who coaches offense with Tom Osborne, who actually is his off offensive coordinator, said they wanted to, Brent, they wanted to establish the running game inside, then come outside with a variety of options. They have three options in their game plan today and pick the options as they read what the defense is doing. We haven't seen them run the option outside yet. Dick Holbein and Cheatham check in from Coach Osborne's sideline. And there are three wide receivers in this first down. Schuster, the fullback, figures to be used today. This is D'Angelo behind Schuster and nothing doing. And the defensive line for the Longhorns doing a good job of cleaning up and not leaving creases. Tyson King in on that stop because you and I have watched D'Angelo Evans. And he broke Barry Sanders' rushing records as you watch this line clean up here. Right, you know, I talked to Tyson King on the practice field the other day and asked him about playing outside linebacker against a team like this, and he said, my main problem is defensing the outside run as well as the option in playing pass defense. Let's see what Nebraska comes up with here. Pretty obvious passing situation. Second and nine, they'll run the option instead. Now the late pitch, and here's Angelo, nothing doing. Helmet comes flying. And he's down at the 36-yard line. Gary Darnell, the defensive coordinator for, for Texas, Brent, said that they had to really shorten their game plan from a, the amount of defense they put in there because they run so many things, and they wanted to keep it simple for the kids. And they, when they run a play like this, they crack block, and the quarterback is always going to get knocked down like that. They had a great crack block to the inside, but real good inside-out pursuit. That was Hickerson. Was that Hickerson? Crack Frost on that play, Coach. Third and four. You can't take too many of those in a game. For Sean Jackson, over to the left side is the tight end. And now Frost throws into the middle, and he hits number 25, and Cordell makes it to midfield. John Federal is finally brought down by Chris Carter. They just put that play, they call it the jailbreak screen. That's, they just put it in the game plan this week. The little quick pass, the tight end will block out for him. You'll see what I'm talking about. The tight end will come out and block, and he'll screen 
can get the kick out block and they'll screen. There's a tight end kicking out. There comes the rest of the lineman blocking downfield. And remember, you can block downfield as long as the ball is caught in the backfield. And the linemen were down there doing a good job. Shevin Wiggins and Cheatham, the wide receivers off to Frost right. First and ten, ball at midfield. Frost is going to throw it. Straight down the middle. Cheatham deflected. Incomplete. And that was number 30, Bryant Westbrook, showing you why he's one of the best in the business. And he threw the ball to the wrong receiver. It was a combination pattern, and Shevin Wiggins, 29, went down the sideline. All alone, they have two guys on him, and to the right, an out-and-up pattern. He was all alone. He will never be more open than he was on that play, and he didn't read it properly. Oceanside, California, and he grew up playing alongside a defensive back by the name of Michael Booker, who's over there at Nebraska. In fact, they talked this week. I said, Westbrook, what did you say? To he said, I'm not telling you. So that's private. <laughs> so it's second down and 10. Ball in midfield for Frost and the Huskers. They trail it by a touchdown here in the Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship. Straight back Frost. Sets the screen on the other side of the Angelo, and he's got it. To the 30. Brendan Holbein of Nebraska, he saves the day after the Evans fumble. Frank Solich loosening them up now with the screenplays. Two right there within a short period of a time. Not really characteristic of a Nebraska offense. Good changeup. They have good linemen that are mobile. They can get downfield. And when you get the balls to this young man in the open field, he's going to move it upfield. Big save by Holbein, Coach. Nebraska with a first down at the 25-yard line. You know, sometimes people lose track of how important the guy is that recovered the fumble. They really do. I think they lost Chris Dishman's play yeah. entirely last week. Here's D'Angelo. Bangs to the 19-yard line. That's a six-yard gain. And it puts Nebraska in second and four. And it really makes Nebraska tough to defend with you that bet. option. Yes, you bet. And plus, see, Osborne says, you've been running the counter on us real well. We're going to come back and run our own counter. It's the best running play in college football. I really believe it is. It really originated at Nebraska years ago. Sheldon Jackson, Kimpy, off to the Nebraska sideline. Tim Carpenter, the tight end on the left side. And Rashawn Jackson over on the right. the option. There's the pitch to D'Angelo and a nice tackle by Taji Allen out of Lubbock, Texas, the senior cornerback. And of course, the issue all week with the defensive backs down in Austin had to be wrap up and tackle. Do not miss the first time right. against the Huskers. Exactly right. You talk to those people, you talk to the secondary coach Steve Bernstein, and all week long he says, we have emphasized tackling as well as playing pass defense. The responsibilities are tremendous in coming up and wrapping up and getting them down. It doesn't have to be fancy. Just get them on the ground. We've got a third and three. Approaching the half minute mark left in the first quarter. Mahomes with the game's only touchdown. Frost keeps it, cuts back. Excellent strong. Breaks free to the three yard line. First and goal. Nice strong run by Scott Frost. See, with the option, they get you running toward the sideline to stop the pitch. And a quarterback that can run, he can go ahead and turn it up inside. Now, they brought the people on that option that are assigned to make the tackle on him. So he was free to turn it up inside. Good design. It was a big play uh, in the past, and it'll be a big play today unless they get pressure right now and force that pulling guard right in the quarterback's face. Touchdown, Nebraska. Well, that takes the pressure off the defense. They weren't planning on shutting them out. In effect, this is a 100-yard drive. I know it won't look like that in the book, but don't forget that Nebraska intercepted the pass in the end zone. Brought the ball out to the 20, so officially it's an 80. But it's a big turnaround in this game with Chris Brown. Nebraska's short man on the field. And the whistle sounds. Oh, I'll bet you what happens. Sheldon Jackson might be the tight end, and he was injured on the last play. 
Did they get the timeout call? That's they did. exactly what uh, Laurie was signaling on that play. It was Vedral, the holder, who alertly, you wondered why the ball went flying past yeah. Vedral. It's because he had his hands in the timeout formation. So he called the timeout in time, and uh, they save it. Well, I tell you, I was looking at the offensive line, and I saw the right tackle look to his right, and there was nobody there, and he started, you know, he panicked. Dick, I bet you're exactly right. It was the uh, injury to the tight end, and the number two man on the kicking team, you know, that's a mental mistake, but it might not prove to be costly. They just use a timeout now. We'll remind you that coming up next, out in Las Vegas, folks, what's the over-under on the length of game? <laughs> huh? Are we going to go four hours out in the desert today? That could be a very entertaining game, but about 68 forward passes. It will be, but I'll tell you what BYU has done lately. They have proved that they can run the football. Yeah, how about those two speed guys yeah. that we discovered early against yeah. Texas A&M? Yeah. That one kid who scored, uh, rushed for 600 yards in a high school game. Remember him out there for BYU? No, you give me his name because I don't remember. <laughs> 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 and we are deadlocked. Alert play by Bedro. And it's 7 7. Nebraska and Texas in the first ever Dr. Pepper Big 12 championship meeting. Two teams did not play during the regular season of the Big 12. Texas, a winner of the South, virtually in a win or go home situation over the last month. Nebraska and Colorado played for the Northern Division title a week ago. And let's see where Brown marks this one. Oh, my. Okay. Bring it out on the 20 yard line and let's see what kind of a tune James Brown is singing this time. You know, one thing our crack stats man George Hill says that running back's name at BYU is Ronnie Jenkins. We'll take his word for it. All right. Jackaroo. Brent, let's update you on a couple of Nebraska Cornhusker injuries. Sheldon Jackson has a slightly strained right knee. They put a hinge brace on it. But more importantly, right here, Scott Cross, during that last series, actually lacerated his chin. The doctors went over and looked at it, decided not to put any stitches in, but rather what they've done is they've numbed it and added a bunch of butterfly bandages, patted it, and he'll be back out. To run this offense, you've got to be a tough kid. And Frost is that. First and ten for Brown and the Horns. Adams, the motion receiver. Brown looking back at him on a screen. Flanker screen read beautifully that time by Mike Fullman, the cornerback, the senior, coming up to make the stop. There's a kid, one of the Nebraska walk-ons, getting his opportunity to play. They have a number of them on their roster, and that play right there proves that he can play. The end with the Terrell Farley suspension. Mike Mentor a week ago playing that rush linebacking spot. He has been lining up back in that rover position, taking a look at the formation and then adjusting accordingly as McBride attempts to camouflage how he's using his defensive backfield. Now you can see Mentor. He'll walk up right behind the umpire, sort of flex off the line, a linebacking position now. And this is second and 13. Penalty flag is thrown. Brown sideline incomplete, but there is a penalty flag, which was thrown by the linesman, Ron Underwood. So five yards for the horns, and we can take a look at the first quarter numbers. One thing is apparent that the Longhorns have moved the ball in the air. Yes, they have, and then, then you know, they, they're down there in position to either get the touchdown or a field goal, and they turn it over, and Nebraska drives the length of the field with that turnover. Other than that, you see, I, Texas has to be very pleased with the combination of being able to run and pass so far in that first quarter. Well, after the penalty is measured off, it'll be second down again, but only eight yards for the Horns, and they come out with a slot to the right. McGarrity, the slot receiver, Stokes backs away from him. Brown, Williams, bounces left. Nothing to it. Boy, that Jamel Williams can flash into football plays. You know, he qualified for the state meet in high school in the 100 meters, and here he is playing outside linebacker. Well, Minter also had a huge hand in that along with Williams. 
it was Minter. Watch him come from the other side on this play as he dips in. And here's the speed. This is the reason why McBride used him at that rush linebacking spot. You bet. You know, I won't be surprised now to see the quarterback start one way and keep the ball and come back outside under, under, behind those down-the-line rushes, Brent. Yeah, that will take care of that. Though. Third and nine. Brown, offensive line, holds, fires deep, high, incomplete, and sort of a miscommunication on that play, but Brown made sure he did not chuck his second interception. Interesting how one play can change the tone of a football game, as Brown's interception and the end zone obviously did this one. You have not heard Wistrom's name. Look at this. They got two guys over there blocking him. They are going to try to prevent with any coverage of allowing someone to block him one-on-one. -on -one. They're always going to try to help. Mark Schultes. Mike Fullman. Ooh, nice button. Back to return this. Turns up at the 36 cutback. And we come back. Nebraska will have the ball. 44-yard line. Nebraska and Texas are tied in the doctor.